let the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The efficacy of the word. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Luke chapter 12, verses 27 to 30. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, Neither be ye of neither be ye of doubtful mind, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Second lesson, Luke chapter fourteen, verse thirty three. So likewise whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Golden text, Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Be a servant of one master. Quote, Brethren, the text above summarizes the theme of this gospel. Do not allow food or any of the material things of this world to prevent you from serving God, because a servant cannot serve two masters at a time. Anybody who loves money has not the love of God in him. Anybody who owns money owns not Christ in him. Anybody who is after the material things of this world has not Christ in him. And no matter the amount of money you may have, if you do not use it for the services of God, such money means nothing, and you are far away from Christ. Remember that widow who used the last might in her life to donate to God? Despite those who donated in thousands and millions, our Lord Jesus Christ counted hers to be the best donation, which means that the widow gave it wholeheartedly, not minding whether that was her last money in life or not. That is what the kingdom of God is likened to. Brethren, no matter the extent of your wealth, if you do not humble yourself like a little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. If you do not use what God has given you to serve Him, you certainly have not Christ as your share. Father supplies all our needs. Brethren, all the problems that befall you in life is due to your ignorance in the ways of God. No matter how wealthy you may be, if you do not first seek for the kingdom of God, you are bound to suffer loss. The Father knows all your demands in life. If you examine carefully our first lesson, you will realize that the Father knows all your problems in life. But the foremost thing expected of you is to surrender to Him completely. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
That was in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Unfortunately, a rich man cannot seek or surrender himself to the kingdom of God because his attention is directed towards how he will make his millions every day. That is why it is said, Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That was in Matthew chapter 6 verse 21. Brethren, the problem of the entire world right from its inception had been the issues of what shall I eat? What shall I drink or put on? But the question is, where has all the money taken you to? Do you believe that if you give out money to someone that you have given that person God? Or would you think that if you accommodate someone you have given in life? Do you think that when you give somebody food or clothes you, are, you have given him God? This is why I say that the entire world does not know God. They lack the knowledge of who God is. They are only deceiving themselves, thinking that they are deceiving God. Therefore, any man who professes to be a rich man lacks the knowledge of God in him. He cannot imagine what God is. He is always boasting of his wealth and consumed with thoughts of how to commit fornication. A rich man cannot pray. Not to talk of testifying about God, but someone who is poor or has constant financial problems in life cannot do without God. And if you watch his behavior closely, you will realize that his day-to-day -day deliberation cannot be complete without calling on God. His boast is always in him. Word is immortal, brethren. It is sad to note that many of you have allowed the material things of this world to gain greater part of you. That is why you cannot think of any other thing but money. When you are advised to give arms, you begin to think of where to get the money and fulfill such obligation. And I ask, is money the only thing you can offer to someone? What about the word of God? Do you not know that the word of God should be given to people? Why would you not go out and preach Christ to people? Recall when Peter and John met the crippled man at the beautiful gate of the temple. Peter told him, Silver and gold have I not, have I not none, silver and gold have I not, but that he had the greatest thing, which is the word of God. They knew convincingly that the greatest thing that is able to give life is the word of God. Money cannot give life, neither can care nor horse, nor wealth, nor anything mundane cannot give life. The only thing that can give life is the word of God. That is why you are enjoined to go out and preach the word of God to people so that they may have life everlasting. Recall when Elijah prayed to God and invoke fire to descend and consume the 400 prophets of Baal over their insubordination to God. In, in 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 19 to 46 it reads, Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400, 
which eat at Jezebel's table, so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people, and said, How long hard he between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if he be bare, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the, my God, and the God that answered my fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry, cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is on a journey, or for adventure, he is sleeping and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and called themselves and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be my name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four hundred, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice. And on the wood, and he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the, and the water ran round about the altar and filled. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass 
at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, what of Isaac and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stone, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto him, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look forward, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that, he, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Israel. Brethren, this is to let you know that the word of God has the power to make and unmake. The word of God gives life. It heals all sicknesses. It also makes one to be wealthy. The only thing required of you is to have solid faith in God and always call upon, upon Him at any time you are in need. Brethren, re-examine the first lesson.